I want to reference a tweet of yours that I saw today and then ask you a question, but you sure. quote tweeted Alex Berenson, who's a oh, uh, yeah, yeah. New York Times a journalist and, a, and an author, etc. And he said, yeah, I've been waiting 15 years for Bitcoin to be more <laughs> useful than an energy guzzling Pokemon card. What's another 15? And you said, Amazing. staggering ignorance on yeah. display everywhere. And it's I wanted to incredible. ask you, yeah. It, yeah, it's crazy. Why is it so hard for seemingly yeah. intelligent people to grok Bitcoin? I mean, today I saw Nassim Taleb on CNBC. Why are all their counter arguments so well, emotional? I'd love to get your take. Yeah, well, Taleb used to like Bitcoin and then he got into clearly some sort of personal feud with somebody. That's very different. The average, because, you know, he's got background from the Middle East. Mm. And initially he really got it. Um, people like Berenson or the literary, you know, establishment or the op-ed yes. editors at the Washington Post, which just published another hit piece on Bitcoin the other day, or uh, the average politician or people who work for the Fed or the Treasury or whatever, the, the, their um, their financial privilege blinds them to Bitcoin's utility. It's very simple. I mean, the, the, the overwhelming majority of Bitcoin critics are people who grew up with the dollar or the euro or the pound. Um, they live in the West where we have a lot of good financial infrastructure for investing in our future, for diversifying retirement portfolios, for sending money to family and friends, for paying people and merchants for uh, protection. Like we actually have government agencies that, that try to like make people whole if a bank collapses. Um, <clears throat> so this is very rare. Most people in the world don't have any of that. They have no, none of this infrastructure. Their yeah. currency is completely worthless outside their country. They have no way to like easily wire money to some other country. Uh, their currency gets devalued uh, I would say at times hyper aggressively. Um, their bank accounts can get frozen for any reason. The, the government doesn't have to give a reason to just freeze it and take all your money and put you in prison or whatever. 5.7 yeah. billion people live under authoritarianism. So, so it's really just privilege like that blinds them. They, they, they can't imagine why anyone would want this because their system sort of works. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that's the simple reason, simple, yeah. simple answer. It's so interesting, right? Like, because I have it and it works, quote unquote, I, I should yeah. never kind of like question it, right? Correct. But we are at the forefront of any financial system, right? Especially in, 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 in the West. And so that privilege. But they would say that we're wasting all this time and energy and money on Pokemon cards. Like they, they legitimately yeah. don't understand. And uh, it's embarrassing. I mean, one, okay, one thing was 10 years ago, even five years ago, six years ago, I mean, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be understandable to be ignorant about Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, if you're some sort of educated journalist or something like that, a politician. In 2024, there's no excuse. I mean, we've got nations mining this thing. We've got a spot ETF. This thing's a trillion dollar asset. This, this thing's being adopted by all kinds of corporations. There's public companies in the United States that provide Bitcoin services and have Bitcoin treasuries. There's Bitcoin usage in communities all over the world. Like at this point, it's arrogance. <laughs>